Okay. Now look at this. Each of there, there's Leah, Eric, Anne, and Bobby. They all have different heights now. Well, they're all the same height, but their, their height is pushing them outside of that available space. They're not close to each other anymore. Notice there's, they're no longer underlined as well. So all the anchor tags within each of my four list items have these similar properties. Next on my list is to control the italicized text that is in my anchor text. If you recall, in each of these, I enclose the text in italics. And the reason I'm doing that is because for normal web view, I don't want people to actually see the text. I don't want them to see the words Leah, Eric, Ann, and Bobby. So this is a little trick that I got from that A List Apart website. By enclosing in italics, I can tell the browser that these particular items will be invisible. Yet if CSS is disabled, then of course italics will be perfectly fine and people will see the italicized text. So italicized text that is inside of anchor tags, visibility hidden. We can no longer see the hyperlinks there. But you see I still have my little pointer hand that tells me I'm on a hyperlink. That means they're still there. Just so we can visualize this a little bit, let's try this real quick. I'm going to jump back up here to my anchor tags and I'm going to put a thin border. Two pixels solid green. There. Those are my hyperlinks. There's Liz, there's Eric's, there's Ann's, and there's Bobby's. If I click on this, of course I don't have a bobby.html file, but it tells me, hey, it can't find bobby.html. So these are my hyperlinks. So I'm going to leave those borders on there for a little bit just so we can remember that these hyperlinks are there even though we can't really see them. And they all have the same rectangular shape, 90 pixels wide, 100 pixels tall, one on top of the other right now. Okay, we're doing good. Next on the agenda is to position absolutely these hyperlinks. I don't want my four hyperlinks to be one on top of the other in a column. I want them to be in a grid pattern. I want Leah and then Eric right to her right, and then I want Anne below Leah, and I want Bobby to the right of Anne. So my next group of CSS rules is going to be to position those hyperlinks. And remember, or actually position those list items. That's the better way of saying it. And those list items are uniquely identified. I've got Leah, Eric, Ann, and Bobby. These are the list items, the four list items within my people unordered list. Now for each of these, remember, my unordered list identified as people is position relative. These are all going to be position absolute. And I will position each of them absolutely, and I'm going to position them somewhere from the top and the left. Now for Leah, she can be zero pixels from the top and zero pixels from the left. That's actually where she is by default, so we're not going to notice any change there. I know you saw it collapse, but I kind of explained why that happens in a previous video. When you start positioning things absolutely, it takes it out of the lineup and other things kind of take over their spot. But we'll take care of that soon enough. And I'm going to go ahead and copy that so I can just be a little bit more efficient here. Okay, now Eric is going to be to the right of Leah. He will be zero pixels from the top, but 90 pixels from the left. Anne is in the lower left corner. She's going to be 100 pixels from the top and 0 pixels from the left. And Bobby is in the lower right corner. He's going to be 100 pixels from the top and 90 pixels from the left. Save. There we go. So it's kind of hard to see, but there's my four green boxes indicate my four hyperlinks. There's Anne, of course, looking for Anne.html and so forth. Now my borders are causing a little bit of a shift, but that's alright, those borders are going to go away in a little bit. But I've got my unordered list items positioned where I want them. By the way, if I were to scroll back up here and take out my visibility hidden for a moment, and you can see there's Leah's text, Eric, Anne, and Bobby. They're all in the spots where I would expect them to be. Okay, now that I have my list items positioned where I want, 
Now, I have to tell the browser how I want the background image to change. Because the whole point of CSS sprites is to change the background image. I don't want to just see the black and white version of this image. I want to see the color version when I mouse over this. The other benefit of making these list items in these anchors blocks is that I can control the background image of an individual hyperlink. And if the background image of just one hyperlink is changed, then it'll give you that cool hover effect. So back on my CSS, I'm now going to start to control some things here about the hyperlinks that are within my individual list items. For instance, Leah, the list item, has a hyperlink inside of it. And the hover state of that hyperlink is going to be as follows. OK, the hover state of the hyperlink within the Leah list item. The background image is the same image I've already used. I'm not using multiple images. I'm using one image. But here's the trick, the position of that image. When you're talking about image dimensions, it's the x-axis and the y-axis, or the horizontal axis and the y-axis. So an image that is, for instance, in fact, a great example, your, you know, your computer display resolution may be 1,024 by 768. 1,024 wide by 768 tall. Well, I'm positioning this background image 0 pixels from the left and negative 203 pixels from the top. Basically, what that means is, remember the, the lower portion of my 400 pixel tall image is in that bluish color. Well, since I want to shift that up beyond the visible area, I'm going to do a negative because I want to shift it outside of that visible area. So I'm using a negative. And I, we can experiment with all the, you know, we can play around with these numbers left and right. So if I were to put in, in fact, I'll just, I'll start off by putting in a zero pixels. And before I test this out, I'm, I'm going to go back to, and I'm going to get rid of these borders. I don't need these anymore. We were just using these in the short term to visualize some things. So I'm going to get rid of those borders. And this is how my page is looking. Okay, there's my uh, image map. Now, of course, mousing over Eric, Bobby, and Ann doesn't do anything, but if I mouse over Leah, that is doing something. You're thinking, well, what the hell is it doing? It's not doing anything. Well, it's replacing the background image with the same background image at the exact same portion. But what if I did this? Let me go back down here. And um, what about if I do a negative 150? Oh, getting a little bit better. Yeah, you can see I'm getting closer to Leah's. There's the top portion of Leah's head, so my negative number needs to get a little bit bigger because I need to shift that background image up higher. What about a negative 190? Getting better. Now I'm going to jump over to negative 200. Very close. Negative 203. There we go. Now the blue portion of this large image is completely replacing the black and white portion of that large image. And of course it's seamless to the visitor. So by positioning the background image specifically on a hover, we can make this effect. Now I'm going to go ahead and do very similar things for Eric, Ann, and Bobby. Okay, now I have rules for the other three people, so I've got rules for all of them. I just did a copy and paste, so that's why they're all identical background positions, but now I need to adjust them. Eric is over there to the right, so he's going to actually be, his position will be negative 90 pixels, and the height will still be a negative 203. Nope, oh, I might have messed up on Eric. Let's go back and check this out. Oh, that's Ann. I'm thinking of Eric. I've got the wrong. It's Leah, Eric. I didn't change that selector there. Eric, okay, let's see how that's doing. Okay, there's Eric. Okay, we've got the top two. Now for um, Ann and Bobby in the lower portion there, Ann is going to be zero pixels from the left and uh, negative 303 pixels. And Bobby is going to be a negative 90 from the left and negative 303 from the top. There we go. There's my CSS image map, or my CSS sprite.